hey guys welcome to outcome school and once again i am back uh, with the new video and in this video we'll discuss about the android push notification flow using the fcm so this is the topic for this new video so what we will do we will start with the learning as usual and this is the complete flow that we are going to discuss in this video so this is the first step in the complete process which is app setup on the firebase console so here what we do we go on the fcm console website and that website is connected to the fcm server again by the google right so this is by the google so this server is by the google fcm firebase cloud messaging so and this is the website which is connected to that right so this is the client for that web client so here we put all those informations like application package name and then we put app name and so on so so after putting all those information this server will internally generate few things for us right so it will generate google services.json and service account.json right two things it will generate for us google services.json and service account.json so this google services and service account json we can simply download it from the fcm console after putting all those information that we have done here we should be able to see two buttons and by clicking on those buttons we can download this and this so once we have downloaded we have to keep this google services.json on the client side so in your android application you are going to put this in your project right so this will be present in your project on the client side project and this file service account.json you will keep it on the back end on your back end server on your back end server you are going to keep service account.json so these two files has some importance i will explain that so these two files are important to discuss now so google services.json as we know we keep it on the client side in our project client side android application right so there we keep it so this json file will have all the information needed to connect to the fcm server so your application client android app will use this file to connect to the fcm server which is of the google right so it will have all those information needed to connect to the server and the next is service account.json as we have already discussed that this file we keep it on the backend side on our own backend side right so this is our backend server so here we have kept service account.json so this file will help us in connecting with this fcm server so when we have to connect with the fcm server to send the notification somehow this file is going to help us and we will discuss how in some time okay so now the third step is launching the application either we launch the application or our user launches the application so because we have this google services.json so because of this our app will be able to connect with the fcm server and the fcm server will understand that i need to generate the fcm token for this app for this particular user right so for this application and for this particular user specific to that it will generate a fcm token and this fcm server will somehow send this to client so in the callback we get the information that we have a new fcm token on the client side so now that we have the fcm token on the client side because google has given us so what we have to do it is our responsibility to send that fcm token from here to our own backend server so our backend developer will provide an api post api so that we can simply make a request and send that fcm token inside the post http request so we need to make a post http request from here to the backend server with the fcm token that we have received from the fcm server from the google so now what we will do we will make a http request now suppose our user id is 1 so for this user id we will make a http post request so now the backend server will start storing the data in a database table so it will store corresponding to the user id 1 some fcm token that we have sent to the server so now the backend server has fcm token of all those users 
who has opened the application. So one thing to notice here is that our FCM server will keep on updating the FCM token whenever needed and it will give you the callback in the application. So again, it is our responsibility to resend the FCM token by making a simple HTTP POST request to the backend server so that it can also update the FCM token. And now one more point to note here is that in case the same user is using the same application on the multiple devices. So if we want to send notifications to all those devices, so we will have to store one user with the list of FCM token that we have received. So accordingly, we can change the backend implementation at our backend side. So we need to store the list of FCM token corresponding to the particular user. So that is also a point to note here. So now we have the FCM token stored on our own backend based on the requirement. So our next step is to send the notification to the user. So let's say you have posted something and someone commented on your post. So how will be the flow? So if someone commented on your post, the backend server will come to know that yes, someone has commented on your post. So backend server should notify you that someone commented on your post. XYZ commented on your post, something like that it will notify, right? So it means that our backend server will have to connect to the FCM server and FCM server will ultimately send the notification to the client. So this will be the flow. So how that information will reach to the client that someone has commented on your post. Let's try to understand. So the backend server will get the trigger that yes, I have to send the notification to the particular user. So let's say the user ID is one. So corresponding to the user ID one, first of all, backend server will try to retrieve the FCM token of that user ID one. So the backend server will have the FCM token intact and it will prepare the content of the notification, which is someone commented on your post. That is a content and some extra information like text message and so on. So, so FCM token and content of the notification is ready now. And here in addition to FCM token and content of the notification, we will need one more thing, which is access token so that we can verify this is our own real backend server. So we need to verify that, right? Otherwise anyone can send anything to the FCM server and it can simply send the notification that is completely wrong. So we need to send one more extra thing, which is access token that access token we will get by using this file. So the backend developer will write the code to use this file to connect to this FCM server and get the access token. So now this backend server will have FCM token content of the notification and access token that will have some expiry. So after some interval, it will have to regenerate the access token based on the validity. So using the access token, using the FCM token and the content of the notification, we can simply send all this data to the FCM server. And one note to make here is that we don't have to generate this again and again. Whenever the access token has expired, then only we need to generate this. The backend server will write the code for that. So the backend server will now send three things, access token, FCM token, and content of the notification to this FCM server. So the FCM server is connected to the mobile. So it can simply send the information to the client that now you can utilize this information and show the notification to the user. So this is the overall flow. So we discussed the step one, which is app setup on the Firebase console. And then we discuss the step two to download the JSON file. One file we will keep here. One file we will keep on our own backend server. And in the third step, we discuss about the app launch in which our app will connect to the FCM server. And in the fourth step, we discuss that it will generate and send the FCM token. So our client side will have the FCM token. And in the fifth step, we discuss that we will send the FCM token to the backend server and backend server will start storing the FCM token inside the database table. And then whenever we have to send the notification, we will follow this step six. And in that we discuss access token, FCM token and the content of the notification that we need to send to the FCM server. And in the step seven, the FCM server will send the notification to the mobile client and mobile client can simply show the notification to the user. So this is the overall flow of the Android push notification 
using the FCM. So this was all about the Android push notification flow using the FCM. So that's it for now. I will see you in the next video.